I had said we'd make three videos where we build a Lewis structure, shape a Lewis structure, and then look at the overall polarity and phase behavior of Lewis structures or compounds. But I think I need to shrink this into four videos. So the next one we're going to look at this video is just going to be really doing five practice problems where we build a valid Lewis structure. Remember the rules? And we have about four of them, I guess, plus finding the valence electrons. So finding the valence electrons is going to be number one, I guess, number of valence electrons is the first of the tasks we have to do for any molecular formula that's given. But past that, we also need to find the middle and frame it. So we'll maybe put those two together. So fi find the middle element, what is in the middle, and frame it. So find the middle and frame it, we'll say kind of number two. Number three, We'll be adding in the lone pairs from the outside in. We add them in from the outside of the structure in, and we drop down if needed, those lone pairs. So three and four kind of go together. So you might say we have one, two, three. Find the number of valence electrons. Find the middle and frame around it. And then maybe fill in with electrons and drop down if needed. Can kind of be the third sort of thing you have to do with a structure. Let's do this five times. And I'll try to go as quick as I can. So here's a molecular formula given H2CO. So let's find the number of valence electrons. I'm going to use this space down here. So we know for hydrogen there's one valence electron, but one valence electron, but because you have two hydrogens, we times that by two. The number of valence electrons, again looking at either the group number it falls under, 4A, or taking and counting the steps lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon over to that element carbon in the periodic table, you're going to come up to four. And the number of valence electrons for oxygen, if you do the same thing, either look at the group number 6A or count number of boxes from left to right, you're going to come up with not zero, but with six. Sorry. So six plus four plus 2 is equal to 12. We've got 12 valence electrons that in the end are going to have to be in this structure that we propose at the very end. So let's do the first thing. Let's find the middle and frame around it. The carbon is of greatest need. So I'm going to put him in the middle because he needs four bonds. Oxygen is going to only need two and hydrogen is only going to need one. So we're going to put everything else off of it because he has the greatest need for bonding. So we're going to add in the lone pairs. It says to add those in. We want to add them from the outside and then in. So I'm going to start at the O's and the H's. Now I notice the H's cannot take any electrons because they already have two within the bond that they're sharing. So we can't add there, but we can add to the oxygen. So I'm going to add the remaining electrons that I need to add to the oxygen. And you say, well, how do you know the number of remaining electrons? Well, I need to get to a total of 12 total electrons, but how many are already committed into the frame, meaning a part of the frame? Well, I've got two here, two in this line, and two in this line, so that's a total of six. So I only need to add six more. So I'm going to add them all to the oxygen for now, just putting them in there. Lone pairs added. Check. So we're done with step one, finding the valence electrons. Step two, finding the middle and framing around it. And we're almost done with step three, but notice here it says drop down lone pairs if needed. You say, well, how do I know if it's needed? Well, we know atoms, all atoms in the second period, want a filled valence shell. They want eight electrons around them. Well, the oxygen has two, four, six, eight around it. But carbon, we notice, only has two, four, six electrons around it through bonding. So what I can do is drop down these electrons. They'll still be part of oxygen's count, but they'll now be part of carbon in his count. So I'm going to drop those two down. I still have two left, and I've kind of repositioned them. And now I have my final structure. 
we dropped it. So we dropped that lone pair down and we made our final structure for formaldehyde. Let's do a second one. Let's try ozone O3. So again, we're going to need to know the number of Vance electrons. For oxygen it's 6, so 6 times 3. That's going to be 18 electrons. I have to get in to the final structure. Well, what's the central atom? It's not, a, I guess, a mystery here. You just pick one of the oxygens. And we're going to frame around it. And I'm just going linear because it seems that'd be the easiest thing to propose first. And we'll talk about shaping later. Um, we're going to add in the lone pairs. Now, I only, already have one bond here and another bond here so that's four electrons so I need to add in 14 more so I'm going to add from the outside in so I'm going to draw my frame again I'm going to put two four six and stop there because that gives me two four six eight and I don't want to put more around that oxygen so I jump to the other side two four six now the total number of electrons I have right now is 16 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. So I'm going to put the last two on the inside now. I've exhausted the outside positions. Now I'm going to have to put it on this oxygen. Now this is an interesting problem now. I have the ability to drop down two different ways to drop it. I can drop from this side. So I'm going to maybe put this one in dash. If I do that, I'll just say the dash side, I would have the following structure. So this, let's check to make sure everybody's satisfied as far as a octet rule. Around this oxygen we have two, four, six, eight. Around this oxygen in the middle we have two, four, six, eight. And around this oxygen on the outside to the right we have two, four, six, eight. So this is a valid Lewis structure. We have to stop there. But notice again, back at this position here, I chose to drop from the left where I could have as easily dropped electrons from the oxygen on the right. And these are two distinct or different oxygens. They're, they're both present. So we can't just pick one and call it done. So you have to say, I can have a little bit of this resonance form where the oxygen on the left has dropped electrons down or I can have, and I just have to say, a little bit or a mixture of the resonance form wherein I drop from the right side. You say, well which one is it? Well it's a mixture of both. It's a weird world down there but we say the real structure is a mixture of these two where I dropped from the left and that was the top one but I could also drop from the right the solid line and that would be the one on the bottom and so that's the great, great uh, kind of just uh, frustration to students is they want to pick which one of these is the real Lewis structure it's a 50-50 mixture of both I guess sit and reflect on that for a while so what that means is that you don't have a true double bond on either of these sides. You have a partial double bond on both of those sides because these two resonance forms are contributing to the real structure that we call the resonance hybrid. All right, we're two down. Let's go at least two more in. I may not make it to the fifth problem, but here we go. Let's try number three, third practice problem. So we have sulfur trioxide. So again, we need to know the number of valence electrons. I think I'm going to stop with this one because I like short videos, maybe a lot of them, instead of a few long videos. So let's go ahead and say for sulfur, we have six valence electrons because you step over six spots or it's in the 6A column along with oxygen. So with oxygen, we have three of those. So we times that by six or three times six is 18 plus our 6 is 24 valence electrons that we have to have to add it to the final structure. The middle would be of course sulfur. Now why? 
Not because he has a greater need than oxygen. He's, in general, needing at least two bonds. But whenever you have two that are equal sort of need, kind of needing two bonds, oxygen, sulfur. Both of them need two bonds. Go with the one that's farther down the periodic table, lower. This is a third row element. This is a second row element. The reason for that gets into a little bit of details that we're not going to go into, but it has the ability to do more in terms of bonding than just eight electrons around it. So if you're in doubt, pick the lower element as the central element. So we've got S, and we're going to frame all the other atoms around it, so the oxygens. And now we're going to add in our 24 electrons. Now notice we already have six with the bonding electrons, two, four, six. Each handshake has two hands. Each line has two electrons, so two, four, six. From 24 leaves us with 18 that we're going to need to add in. It's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, 14, 16, and 18. So I made it in. So if I add all these up, the two electrons for each line, and of course the dots, I get to 24. But we notice that sulfur is not satisfied. It does not have eight electrons around it. So we're going to have three ways in which we could satisfy the sulfur. Three ways in which we can not pop it, but drop it. Ah, uh, yeah. So here we go. So we're going to drop from the top, and I would get, if I do that, I'm going to try and draw this, squeeze these in here, I would have the following resonance form, but I could have chosen to drop it from this oxygen. Oops, that would look different. Still a single bond there, sorry. We're putting these, squeezing these real close together. So again, this is supposed to be separate. There we go. I have one resonance form now. A second one where I've used this oxygen instead of this one to make a double bond. Then finally, and I'll put this one a little bit lower. One, two, three, four, five, six. We haven't done anything with him. One, two, three, four, five, six. We haven't done anything with him, but we've dropped it from this oxygen. That's three resonance form that each contribute one third of their structure to the final resonance hybrid. So again, just like in the last structure, we would not have a true double bond at any of these positions. It would be partial or a third of a double bond at all positions. And I forgot to kind of bring in on the last two structures the formal charge rule by Daniel Gonzalez. So I just want to kind of look at what we've done so far and just see if there were any formal charges we've missed. So going back to that first one, oxygen likes to have two bonds. He's good. Carbon likes to have four bonds. He's good. And H likes to have one bond each. So that one's with no formal charge. On our second one where ozone was the focus, we know that oxygen likes to have two bonds off of it. So this one's happy. This one, though, has one more bond than what he really wants. Oxygen likes to have two. This one has three. So from the Gonzales rule, remember, that would be a positive charge. We're just adding in some information about the structure along with, because it really is needing to have sharp charge shown to be a valid Lewis structure. And this one has one less, so that would be a with negative charge. So you can see the same thing here. This still would have a positive charge in the middle, and now the negative charge would be right here. So this also tells us that we have a mixing of the resonance forms that, such that we get a little bit of negative charge on this oxygen and a little bit of negative charge on this oxygen. And last, and we'll stop with the one we just did, the third practice problem, sulfur trioxide. Looking at these resonance forms, and I just want to say these are not the complete... Um, there are other resonance forms that go beyond these three, but these are what we have used to satisfy sulfur's desire for at least eight electrons around it. Sulfur can actually have more than eight electrons around it, but we'll just consider these three that we've drawn as valid, but we need to, know, we need to show charge. 
So with this one, we know that oxygen likes to have two bonds, but this one only has one. So by the Daniel Gonzalez rule, if you have less than what you want, you're negative. So this would also be negative. And you say, well, then how is this going to balance out? Because this is neutral. It does not have a charge. Well, the sulfur here has two more bonds than what it wants. So we're going to have a plus two on this sulfur here. So that balances out. And the same thing here, if I can get it squeezed in here, plus two, because it has one, two, three, four. Here we're going to have plus two, one, two, three, four. And um, then we put in our negative charges. This is negative one, this is negative one. Negative on this oxygen here because it only has one bond, and negative on this oxygen because it only has one bond. That's added a little bit of confusion maybe to the structures we had, but I just wanted to make sure we touched on formal charge. Oxygen here has just one bond each, so they're each with negative charge because it's one less than what they really want. This oxygen had zero charge, formal charge, because he does have two bonds off of it. And to balance these two negatives, we said the sulfur must have a plus two. All right, I'll stop there. Thanks for listening, and hope that made some sense. We'll do one more, or sorry, two more in the next presentation.